Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Minus 24 minutes. Solonauts taking up lift off positions. A OK. Check. Check. Solar module to solar control. Commander Solonaut Harris reporting. Module first check, A OK. Understand. A OK, Colonel. Radio 5 by 5. Lift off minus 20 minutes. Clear launch area. Repeat. Clear launch area. Thrust checks. Minus 10 seconds. Sounding amber alert. Thrust check minus 5. Two, one, ignition. Seventeen million pound thrust and increasing. Thrust checks green. Eight minutes to go. Twenty million pounds thrust and steady. Gantry retraction green. One minute, ten seconds to lift off. Solar control to Commander Solonaut Harris. We're all rooting for you, fellas. Thank you, Solar Control. 60 seconds to lift off. Stand by to release fuel injection. Stand by, Solar Module. 13 seconds. Commencing final countdown. 
Pro is on. You know, a rocket launching never fails to give me a kick. Especially that one, Father. Just think, a rocket to the sun. Hold it a minute. That film, folks, taken a week ago, showed the launching of the sun probe. Within the next hour, we hope to bring you live pictures direct from sun probe itself, showing the completion of this daring and important project. We also hope to bring you shots of the rocket in space via our latest tel-radio cameras. As you all know, the object of the mission is to capture a few fragments of matter released by the sun. With me in the studio is Professor Heinz Bodman, who is going to explain just how the Sun Probe project will operate. Good evening. Say, where's Brains? Doesn't he want to hear all this? Ah, this is old stuff to him, Father. He's in his workshop playing around with his latest invention. Uh, now, uh, Brayman, I'm gonna test your uh, secretarial characteristics. Now, tell me, what are my appointments for the day? 9 a.m. monitor electronic telecast from Cape Kennedy. 11 a.m. check Thunderbird 2 alarm systems. 1 p.m. half supper. Gee, Brains, your robot is sure improving nicely. Yeah, uh, Scott. But he's still late with his responses, I I'm afraid. Yeah, well, uh, well, what I came to say was, when you're through, there's a very interesting program about the sun probe on the air. Oh, dear. Bremen, you have such a lot to learn still. Uh, perhaps if I taught you chess, it might improve your mathematical powers. The Solonauts will release a radiation-sealed refrigerated probe. The probe will then fly through a prominence. Automatically, it will collect particles of matter from the flare. And so we will have a piece of the sun. Thank you, Professor. This then is the plan. A dangerous mission, yes, but all foreseeable protective measures guard the Solonauts against the sun's immense heat and radiation. Twenty-foot thick protective walls surround these three brave men in the cramped cabin of the solar module. It's fantastic. Our instruments are reducing the sun's glare 10 million times. Yes, and it's still powerful. Let's take a look at the limb we're gonna shoot at. We'll be going into orbit in 38 minutes. That's the tricky bit. If we miss the orbit, we could end up in the sun. Internal temperature rising. Increase refrigeration, two steps. Phew, that's better. It's a morbid thought that without that little gadget, we'd simply melt away. soon. Surely Brains won't want to miss this. Uh, now, if I can only make Brayman think quicker. Yeah, that's a good move. I'll increase the uh, megadecibars by, say, 15 degrees. 
Don't you want to watch Operation Sun Probe, Brains? I I'd prefer to fix Brayman, Mr. Tracy. He's still far too impulsive. But Brains, they're going into orbit in five minutes. Four and one quarter minutes to be precise, Mr. Tracy. Say, you know the Sun Probe routine by heart. You're not as blasé as you act. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. Orbital firing. 90 seconds. Right. How about those radiation figures, Camp? I have them, Frank. All at phase six. That's swell. We're gonna be okay. 30 seconds to orbital firing. Stand by to fire retros. Orbital path. 10 seconds. Right. Stand by. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, retros. Great. We're on correct orbit. Check radiation and temperature levels. Temperature, A-OK. -okay. Radiation, A-OK. -okay. 20 seconds to firing time for probe. All systems on probe are green. 10 seconds. Firing controls are go. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Well, folks, the sun probe has been fired. We will give you all the details as they are received from the spaceship. The tension here in the studio mounts as we await further news. Hmm. Yeah, that, that shows better powers of humanistic reasoning. So if I increase the diffusory isobar rating, Brayman here should react a great deal faster. But I guess I shall never succeed in creating a robot with a finer brain than a human. That is checkmate, I believe, Brayman. She's going fine, straight for the prominence. Sun probe going through flare now. Standing by to fire remote control rockets. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Fire. It's coming out. She's turning. We've made it. Great. Let's get that probe. And then back to Earth. We have just heard that the probe has collected the matter from a prominence. It is now on its way to rendezvous with the main ship. The solar knots are in excellent condition. Wait, the probe is being collected now. Just look at this tell radio picture. They pulled it off. I've got to hand it to them. They're great. I don't think they're gonna make it. How's that? I said, I, I, I don't think they're gonna make it. But everything's going fine. Hold it, folks. Something's gone wrong. In picking up the probe, the main ship has lost its course. The tracking stations report that the spaceship is heading on a collision course with the sun. Stay tuned to this channel for minute-to-minute -minute information. <laughs> What went wrong, Brains? Well, uh, in collecting the sun probe, the solar ship had to steer onto a collision course with the sun. Sure, but wasn't that part of the plan? Yeah, yeah, it was, but I suddenly figured that the radiation level at that distance from the sun could interfere with the ship's control system. So the solar knots can't fire the retros and break away? Right. Now, as a safeguard, the solar control center on Earth can send a radio beam to fire the ship's motors by remote control. Then why don't they do it? They're probably trying that right now, but I have severe doubts whether their beam will penetrate the radiation either. Please stand by for a news flash. 
We are going over to Colonel Benson at the Solar Control Center for an important announcement. All efforts to alter the spaceship's course by firing their retros by radio beam from Earth have failed. Now I have a vital request to make. If international rescue are watching, would they please communicate at once with Solar Control Center, Cape Kennedy? I repeat, this is vital. International rescue, we need your help. Get me Cape Kennedy. Yes, sir. Very well, Colonel Benson. We'll attempt a rescue. But this is a tough one. You can say that again. Anyway, good luck. Gee whiz. He sits there playing chess while those three guys in that spaceship are heading for disaster. I just don't dig him. Try the retros again. It's no use. The circuit's dead. It's the radiation. It's reached an all-time high. Temperatures up around the 120s again. Increase refrigeration. Yes, the radiation level's too high for the Earth to get the safety beam through. We're too close to the sun. I'm getting closer every second. Right, let's go over it once again. The sun probe rocket is heading straight into the sun. And unless we can fire the retros to make the rocket turn round, those three solar knots are doomed. Well, uh, Mr. Tracy, the only solution is for us to fire the retros by radio beam. Well, the radio complex in Thunderbird 3 would seem the obvious choice. But, Scott, the transmission range of Thunderbird 3 isn't powerful enough. I think Thunderbird 2 transmitter would stand a much better chance. Well, that would apply if both craft were at ground level. Agreed. But we could take Thunderbird 3 into space and get through much more effectively. What's your opinion, Brains? Well, Mr. Tracy, I think we may be underestimating the heat and radiation resistances of our uh, spacecraft. But the transmission potential of Thunderbird 2 could certainly be tremendous. Well, we've got to make up our minds soon. The whole world is waiting for International Rescue to act, and after three hours, we're no nearer a decision. Let's face it. Both Thunderbird craft have an equal chance of success or failure. Why don't we gamble on one or other of them paying off? Right. Gordon has hit the nail on the head. We'll launch a two-prong rescue attempt. First of all, we've got to get Thunderbird 3 launched as soon as possible. When do you think that could be, Brains? Well, the radio equipment will have to be modified, but I should think launching could take place soon after sunup. Right. Go and organize that now, Brains. Yes, Mr. Tracy. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way. Virgil? You better go to the computer room and work out what point is best for Thunderbird 2 to project a safety beam towards the sun probe. Get Grandma to organize some auxiliary clothing. Okay, Father. Father, we'll need an extra crew member to operate the safety beam. All right, Alan, you better take Tintin along with you. Launching takes place at 0800 hours. <laughs> Yes, Father. Let's hope it works from that distance. It's got to. It's as close as you dare go. Good luck, all of you. Your first mission, Tintin. Make it a successful one. I'll do my best, Mr. Tracy.
Take up launch positions. FAB. Stand by for blast off. Lift off. Earth's atmosphere in 10 seconds. Okay, Alan, I'm coming up. See you later, Tintin. Yes, Scott. Okay, Scott, we're clear of atmosphere. Tintin, you'd better get the electronics side lined up. We'll be in the danger zone in about 65 hours. Yes, Alan. I've already started. Right, auxiliary clothing. Auxiliary clothing. Check. Snow dispersal unit. Snow dispersal unit. Check. No, you'd better make that too. It's going to be pretty cold out there on the mountain. Two it is. What about the transmitter truck? I've already got that in the pod. Uh, perhaps we'd better take uh, the mobile computer too, just in case. Uh, that's it, right over there. Right. Will that be all? Yeah, yeah, that's all. I'd best get straight down to the hangar now. I'll have these fed to the pod by the automatic beltway. Virgil, you've got full clearance for launching. Thanks, Father. So long. admit, Gordon, that I was never so unsure of the success of a mission before. Unless Virgil or Alan gets within transmission radius of Sun Probe, 
and the three men in that rocket are lost. It's like a nightmare. Yeah, one I've had many times. Well, there's still time. We've got a whole day before... Before we melt to nothing? Why doesn't Earth do something? Solar module from International Rescue. Do you read me? Now I'm hearing things. I thought that was the radio. Come in, solar module. This is International Rescue. It is the radio. Yes, sir. International Rescue. Of course. Solar modules of Thunderbird 3. Where are you? Can you help us? We hope so. We're going to try to fire your retros from space. We're two hours away from calculated release area, Scott. Check. But the cabin temperature is increasing rapidly. We can't go much closer to them. Why not try it now? Okay. Well, at least we'll know how short we are of success. I heard that. Operating safety beam now. Negative. We're four hours short. Four hours? But well, that means we'll have to go much closer to the sun than was estimated. It looks like it. Can we stand the increased heat and radiation? On paper, no. But we can't just abandon those three guys. We sure have a problem. The problem is Tintin. Can we ask her to risk her life further? Excuse me, Mr. Tracy. I could not help but hear your words. Tintin is my daughter. I think I can say what her answer to your problem would be. Uh, yes, I know what you're going to say. She wouldn't hesitate to go on into the danger zone. But is it right for us to ask her to? Both my daughter and I owe our lives to you, Mr. Tracy. For this reason, it is right. She will go with your sons. Go ahead, Virgil. How's it going? We've just crossed the Themalayan Mountains, Father. And ought to be touching down on Mount Arkin in about three and a half minutes. What's it like out there? Pretty stormy, Father. It's pretty stormy. <laughs> should be immediately beneath us. from Thunderbird 2. Calling base from Thunderbird 2. Loud and clear, Virgil. We've touched down just under the summit of Mount Arkin, Father, and are about to get out the transmitter truck. All right, Virgil. What's the news from Thunderbird 3? 
Not very good, I'm afraid. Their first safety beam projection was a failure. And they're having to go nearer the sun. Don't worry. Maybe we'll have more success this end. Virgil, uh, uh, this should be fine. We're well clear of Thunderbird. Okay. Let's start lining up the transmitter beam. At the first estimated region, Tintin. Just give the word and we'll put you in a release capsule and get you to safety. We have been through the whole question, Alan. Any delay increases the danger to the solar nodes. I will go with you. Good girl. Okay. Let's try the safety beam again. Yes, Alan. Here goes. That's what I was afraid of. Another two hours before we're in range. All right. Another two hours it is. Let's hope we can all stand up to the heat. Let's hope we can stand up to the cold. How's the beam situation? All set. Transmitting safety beam now. Well, Brains, what's the position? Well, it's a very powerful beam we're sending up, but not as yet quite powerful enough. Is there anything we can do? Oh, yeah. Once I have modified the tripartite transistor packs and made a, a few adjustments to the wiring, we can try again. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll fix us some hot coffee. You sure you can't get any more out of the refrigeration plant? No, nothing's working anymore. Where's that rescue ship? It's nearly four hours since we're in contact with them. We daren't go much closer. The hull won't stand much more. Try the signal again, Tintin. Tintin, try the signal again. Yes. Try the, the signal again. still short. 
Can't you increase the power, Tintin? I can overrun the system up to about 0.5. Then do that, will you? We just can't go any closer. It's the rocket motors. They fired. Asher, Cam, we're leaving the sun. We're gonna live. Okay, the solar ship's out of danger. Let's head for home. Just in time, I guess. I couldn't have stood much more of this heat. Fire retros. Well, fire retros, Alan. It's getting unbearable. I have. But they're not working. Alan, we're still on a collision course with the sun. We are now certain that the solar spaceship has been saved. I want to be the first person to say thank you to International Rescue for their... Wait, folks, here's more news. This is disastrous. It can't be true. According to the tracking stations, Thunderbird 3 has not altered course. She is heading straight for the sun. Stay tuned. Gordon, for this channel, what's happening? Minute minute They're indication. not pulling her around. Father, the retros must have failed. We've got to get through to Brains right away. Hello, Father? Virgil, bad news about Thunderbird 3. What's happened? Alan succeeded in saving the sun probe. But now it seems the retros have failed on Thunderbird 3, and they're heading straight for the sun. Straight for the sun? Brains! What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Think, Brains, think! If it is the case, that the uh, beam transmitter is still operating. Yes. We could perhaps, only perhaps, mind you, neutralize the transmitter on Thunderbird 3. Great! What's the frequency? I don't know, but I, I could probably uh, work it out on the mobile computer in Thunderbird 2. Okay, let's get to it. Must think. Must find the answer. Why haven't the retros fired? Lack of power, maybe. But why? Gee, it's like an oven in here. The radio beam. That could cut the power. Tintin, have you shut down the beam? Tintin, can you hear me? Have you shut down the safety beam? Tintin, I'm coming down. Must get down to the lounge. Got to make it. Oh, so hot. So hot. Only a specially fitted ship can withstand the radiation and heat of the sun at that distance. Thunderbird 3 is doomed. What a tragedy. In saving the solar knots, the gallant International Rescue Crew have lost their own lives. All hope is rapidly fading. I won't believe it. I just can't. Scott, Alan... Tintin, they've got to get out of it. Uh, that's it, Virgil. Right. Open it up, and we'll work out the formula for the transmitter. Raymond! Oh! 
no, Virgil, we brought the wrong box. Virgil, there's nothing we can do. Listen, couldn't you work out the formula on paper? I, I only wish I could, Virgil. But you see, without a computer, it would take weeks. But if you could work out the details of Brayman's mechanics without a computer, surely you could do... Brayman? Th th that's it. He's our only hope. Well, let's get on with it, Brains, for Pete's sake. What? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, brains. The formula. Now, uh, Brayman, I want you to calculate the following equation. What is the square root to the power of 29 of the trigonometric amplitude of 87 divided by the quantitative hydraxis of 956 to the uh, power of 77? Do you understand the question? Yeah. Off you go then. Now. Come on, Brayman, come on. Do you think it's gonna work? Got to. It's got to. Well, uh, Brayman? 45,969. It worked, Brains! It worked! I only hope it's right. Come on. Let's get back to the, the transmitter truck. International Rescue calling Virgil at Mount Arkin. This is International Rescue Base calling Thunderbird 2. That's funny. They don't answer, Gordon. They probably used all that power on the safety beam. Maybe you're right, Gordon. Maybe you're right. Base from Thunderbird 2. Base from Thunderbird 2. Loud and clear, Virgil. Where are you? I'm sorry, Father. We just heard your signal as we came back from the pod. Listen, Father, it's our only hope. We haven't got time to explain, but Brains is going to try to jam Thunderbird 3's transmitter. You ready, Brains? Yeah. I've lined the transmitter up. Right. Go.
The retros must have fired. We're moving away from the sun. We're moving away from the sun. Virgil, uh, something's happening. I I'm getting a reading from Thunderbird 3. Yeah, me too. It can mean only one thing. The retros. Yeah, they fired. The retros have fired on Thunderbird 3. Father? It's okay, Virgil, I heard. Good thinking, boys. You've done a great job. I'm really proud of my international rescue team today. Head back for base. We're going to give a real hero's welcome to Tintin, Scott, and Alan. The excitement of Thunderbird 3's homecoming is over, Brayman. Uh, uh, let's see if my improvements on you have worked. Um, it's your move. Take me. I, I don't believe it. Surely it, it can't be true. A machine cannot have a brain better than mine. It was a fluke, Brains. You've been working kind of hard lately, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that must be it. I, I, I wasn't concentrating. That must be it. Yeah. Anyway, Brains, thanks for all you've done. Yeah, thanks, Brains. Thanks, Brains. Thank you, Brains. Thanks, Brains. <laughs>